information I won't tell you the dream, but at the end of it I wrote, does this mean Dennis has... Um, on today's 700 Club, many wonder what awaits them when this life is over. But some say they already know. Real life stories of those who say they've experienced the afterlife. In an instant, a truck crossed the center line, striking his car and propelling him into the world beyond. Don Piper describes the sights and sounds of what he says was a trip to heaven. This and much more on today's edition of The 700 Club. Hello and welcome to this special half hour edition of The 700 Club. You know, the greatest fear most people ever face is death because of the mystery of what lies beyond it. But today we have a fascinating woman with us with fascinating stories from those who say that they have seen the other side. Well, and their stories are not as rare as you might think. A recent Gallup poll showed that at least 8 million people in America have had what is called a near-death experience. Our guest today collected the best of these stories in a book called To Heaven and Back, True Stories of Those Who Have Made the Journey. Please welcome to the 700 Club from Edmond, Washington, Rita Bennett. Rita, welcome. Thank you, Thank Lisa. you so much for being here with us. Thank Help us for you. those in our audience who might not understand what is a near-death experience. A near-death experience is when a person is on the brink of death, uh, maybe they die for one minute, four minutes, and if they drowned, actually it could be a half an hour and they, people can come back. So they not just come, only come back from death, but they have a, a supernatural experience. Mm -hmm. And they might see, uh, they might go through a tunnel, they might see angels, they might see Jesus Christ. That's mm -hmm. who I'd like to see. <laughs> and um, you know, and then then they come back and they tell their story. So that's what makes it a near-death experience. It's not just near death. Mm -hmm. Now, it, one of the things that seems common to me in stories, some of them that you told and others that I've heard, is where people seem to, to feel themselves, they, they know they're dead almost by coming out of their body and hovering above it and looking down, and they actually can see rescue efforts being made to revive them. And then after that, they seem to, to often go into another experience. What are the common characteristics that you've heard of people who've experienced this? Well, they, um, you mean the, the ten, After ten characteristics mm -hmm. uh, of these people? Actually, I, I would like to uh, make sure that, that I get them right. The first one is that you have a, a feeling of being dead, and uh, so you know that. Then the next thing is you feel an out-of-body experience, you know, mm -hmm. like you're saying, mm -hmm. uh, or you feel a painlessness because at one moment you're full of pain and now you're not. You see a being of light. It may be a relative, maybe coming to see you, uh, to greet you, uh, and it may be Jesus Christ. And then you go on to have a life review. Very often, they have uh, seven of the people in my book had life. Uh, out of the seven, four had life reviews, mm -hmm. and so their lives went before them, and they they were taken through to show how they did. You know, the good and the bad. And so it's like uh, God was checking them out, you might say. Well, that's interesting. Helping. There was a movie in recent years called Flatliners, which was not necessarily spiritually based, but it was talking about young people who were uh, in medical school, and they endeavored to have a near-death experience. And many of them, they all came back completely changed. And the defining line of dialogue was, everything matters. When people come back from an experience like that, how are they changed? Well, that is one of the characteristics. I'm glad you mentioned that because they have a personality change. They have a new perspective in life, you know. And uh, actually, I think if you looked at your life and you said, what, what's the next, uh, for the next hundred years, what's the most important thing? You know, then you'd have mm -hmm. to say, my relationship with God and my relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. Those would be the two things I would think of. As, as most important. Mm -hmm. What's been the most amazing near-death experience that you've heard of? Which one has most impacted you? Well, Dr. Landry's experience, a medical doctor, impacted me the most, but he's been on uh, so many programs that I thought maybe I would tell a little bit about Velveeta Jones. Velveeta Jones is the first person in my book, and uh, she is a multiracial person. She's uh, Caucasian. She's Indian and she's African. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and her name is Valvita, which comes from uh, two Latin words. Val, vita means strong life. Mm -hmm. So I like to, to mention that because she truly had a strong life. 
when this happened to her. Uh, she was in the hospital because she lost a, a baby prematurely. And uh, then she went home and then she had these infections. Uh, she came back to the hospital. They decided to give her a hysterectomy. Uh, she had already had cesarean, and that was part of the problem, I guess. Uh, and so while she was in the hospital, she, uh, everything began to fail, so she started dying. The sad thing, another sad thing is, she had one child at home, but now she was adopting. She couldn't have any more children after hysterectomy. She was going to adopt a little boy who was in the hospital at the same time as she was dying. He had just been born, and here he she is He had just been born, yes. And so her husband had to take him home without her at that point while she was in this state. Uh, when she, when she uh, died, she was met by, by Jesus and uh, taken to the Father's throne. And, and so Jesus stood like... Did he say something to her or did he talk to her? Actually, it's, it's like words of thought, thought mm -hmm. words, you know, mm -hmm. and... Um, Rather than spoken, you're uh -huh. saying. Mm -hmm. uh, all she said was when she met him, she knew he was loved through and through. She describes mm -hmm. this coloring. It's like the Shekinah glory of God. You, you cannot even put it into earthly terms. She's a bit of an artist. She, and after she came back, she, all she would draw was pictures of Jesus, trying to get that picture <laughs> back on canvas, uh -huh. you know, that she had experienced. But uh, she was taken to the Father's throne by Jesus, and he stood as, as a cross between her, actually she had a life review right away and she was prostrate. She said, I felt like a little ant. I was there and my whole life was going in front of me from the very beginning to the end. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Because here is an end of your life. This is it. Uh -huh. and, and so uh, it showed the good, the bad. She felt terrible guilt, but yet she was praising God the whole time, which is mm -hmm. the way it is in heaven. You know, wow. you want to praise God even though these things are being shown to you. And so Jesus stood as, as actually a road between the Father and the Son. And, and so he went into the uh, light of, of the Father. She said she couldn't tell where his light and the Father's light ended. They were the same light. And then she heard them conversing about her. She's, there she is flat on the ground. And she heard Jesus say, my blood is sufficient for, for her. She's mine. Wow. And when she heard those words, she began to jump and to rejoice. Uh, no, let's see, she didn't get up right then. He came back, he <laughs> touched her, she got up, and then she began to jump up and down and rejoice. And she said, just like the Bible said, he's my mediator, he's my advocate. Because mm. Jesus became the advocate between the Father and herself. Quickly, not everyone, does everyone, a believer and a non-believer, both have the same kind of experience? Because um, at first I was a little bit skeptical about this, but do both believers and non-believers have the same kind of experience, and how do you work that out scripturally? Well, you know, uh, some non-believers have become believers with a near-death experience. Mm. Actually, they, um, two people in my book really went to hell, and they were, they were converted in their hell experience because they chose Jesus. You see, in the last microsecond of life, we can make a choice for Jesus. I think that's getting too close to the edge personally. But you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that tells about the workers that went out into the field. Those mm -hmm. at the very end got the same as yes. those early on. Yes. And so that would be getting into heaven by the skin of your teeth, but at least you're in. <laughs> but but uh, these people got in, but then they came back to earth to live their lives as wonderful Christians. Wow. Well, it, there are fascinating stories, and if you want to get some information uh, and some exciting stories that will inspire you and, mm -hmm. and actually comfort you and give you some scriptural background as well, we encourage you to get a hold of To Heaven and Back, True Stories of Those Who Have Made the Journey. Rita, thank you so much thank for being you, with Rita. us today. It's Bless wonderful you. to be with you. Well, coming up, a vivid description of the entrance to heaven from a man fully convinced that he has been there. His amazing story is straight ahead. Up next, an angelic chorus. Loved ones who had passed away and a light too bright for human eyes to comprehend. This is what Don Piper says he saw on a visit to heaven. His amazing story when we return. <laughs> 